So here we are with our last YouTube video for BIG 153. And in this one, we will go over how to fill out the two last tabs, ones that are labeled COGS and yearly. Now you'll notice that there are some tabs or some cells are already filled out, but every single yellow uh, cell needs to be completed. And they need to be completed with formulas, not writing in numbers. So to do that, let's have a look and see what we've got. And we're going to start with this one, which is the COGS tab. And you'll see, we'll start with column D. We'll start with column D because you can copy and paste some of the formulas that you're going to get, that you're going to write in column D. So first of all, at the top here, we have the opening inventory, which is fine. That is what you've actually counted uh, before you start work on Monday morning. And underneath that, you have all the total invoices. So these are all inputted manually. So it depends on all the product that you get in on the Monday. These are all the numbers for the total for the invoices that you got. So the first empty cell that needs a formula is total purchases. And to do that is quite easy. We left click on it. We go up to the auto sum. And when you get to the auto sum, you click on it and you'll notice that the highlighted box has all the purchases, but it also includes the opening inventory, which we do not want. So we need to come to the top here till we get the two arrows and then we left click and hold and we drag it down one and then we can enter. And this is the total of all the purchases, but not the opening inventory. So now with all these numbers, we come to the next cell, which is the cogs. So the cogs is a very simple formula and hopefully you will remember it. So we do plus opening inventory plus all the purchases for that day minus the closing inventory. And then we hit enter. And that is your cogs for Monday. That is because when you do the service for a restaurant or a bakery, you have the things that you've bought today and the things that were already in the fridge from yesterday or the day before. So you add those up together. And then after you've sold everything and the doors are closed, you count what is left over. So you can now calculate based on your sales of the day and the difference between your opening inventory plus your purchases minus your closing inventory, how much it costs you to get all those sales. And in this case, we have $733. But now, of course, we need the sales. We need to know what the sales were. Well, to do that, we go back to the forecast sheet and here we have all the sales. So the sales for Monday is right here. So we left click on it to highlight it, right click, copy. We go to the COGS tab and then in here, we highlight it, left click and we paste. And this time we're gonna paste the link because we're taking the number from a different tab. And the last one at the bottom here is a food cost percentage. So I know you're worried about this. This is so hard and complicated, but when you're on Excel, all you do is plus, and then you come to the COGS here, the $733. And the way you do a percentage is always take the smaller number and divide it by the bigger number. So take that and we're gonna divide that and the bigger number in this case of the sales, and you write it, and you click on that, and there you have it, 36.47. Now, uh, row 21 is designed to always show a percentage, so that's why this is coming in exactly that way. And it's perfect, this is exactly what you want. So the first column is great. So let's see what we can copy and paste. So first of all, we can copy and paste this one, which is number, 13. So we highlight it, right click, copy. You can then left click and drag along here, right click, and we paste the formula. Even over here, we're going to paste the formula. So the next one is the cogs. Well, the cogs, again, same thing. We can keep the formula. So we copy it, left click, and we drag, and then right click, and we copy the F for the formula. Even over here, we're going to do F for the formula. I know you're thinking, well, this is really bad because we have these negative numbers, but you have the negative numbers because you don't have the opening inventory up here. So when those numbers go in, because you have a formula in here, they will all change automatically. 
Now we can't change the sales because we have to do those one by one. But what we can do is come down here to the, the food cost. And again, we highlight it, right click, we copy it, and then we left click and drag for each day, and then right click, and we're gonna paste the formula. And even over here, we're gonna paste the formula. And I know straight away you're thinking, oh no, we have Divio, what's wrong? What's wrong is you don't have a number in here. And because there's no number in there, it is not going to give you the answer that you are looking for. So now let's have a look at the second column and see what we can do, which is column E. And the first thing is the opening inventory. Well, what is Tuesday's opening inventory? It's actually quite easy because it's Monday's closing inventory. Whatever your inventory is the night before, hopefully when you come in the next day, it's going to be exactly the same. If it isn't exactly the same, you have a far greater problem than we can figure out in this class. So really all we need to do here is go um, plus, we've already highlighted it, plus this, enter. And then here we can go even better than that. We can now go copy, drag along here, right click and paste the formula. So now look how everything's changed. All the cogs have changed. Everything's beautifully lined up. So before we come down here to the sales, I just want to point something out. Here you'll notice all these totals. So if you buy produce every day like this, for the weekly total, you just use the auto sum and enter, and it'll give you the total purchase for, those, for that produce for that particular week. And the great thing about this is we can now take this number here, copy it, go to one below, drag it down, right click, and we paste the formula, and now we have the totals for everything. We even have the total purchases. Beautiful, that's all we want. Now, it's so much easier to do it before you figure out what the opening inventory is, simply because if you write a number in here, then when you do the auto sum here, it's going to tend to go up because it will always look for the cell right next to it to do the addition. So do it first, and then come here for the opening inventory. So the opening inventory for this week is not the total of each week. You cannot count the flower seven times. So the opening inventory is actually plus Monday's opening inventory, and that's it. So therefore, if you understand that, you'll know that the closing inventory has to be Saturday's closing inventory. There you go. So now we have everything. We have the opening inventories, the closing inventories, the total sales, even COGS for the week. So that's fantastic. Now, the next thing we have are the sales. So I've shown you one and I've shown you all these numbers. So let me show you one more before I let it go. And that is if we come back here to the forecast, we come into Tuesday, we left click on it, we copy, we go to the COGS and in here, and then we left click and we paste the link. And in doing that, we now get a food cost, we get everything. So you can see if you do each one all the way along here, you will end up with a total. Here you have two options. You can actually write this total. And very important, the total sales in here will need to be the same as this, 19225. Uh, there's no reason for you to copy this number simply because when you put all the days in here, this number will be that 19,225. And also down here, total sales will be 19,225. But let me just show you what would happen. You take this 19,225 and we copy it. We go to the cogs, come in here, uh, left, we highlight it and then right click and we click the link. There, 19,225. There is one thing which didn't happen, which sometimes does. I'm going to show you if you do this. There. So what I did then, I just narrowed the column a little bit. And I'm going to show you that because I want you to be able to understand the widening of the column, because sometimes these things crop up. So if you get multiple hashtags like this, that is basically telling you that there is a number in there, but the number is so big 
that it cannot be seen in that cell. So we go up to the top and here you'll notice when I do that, the whole of the G in the column is highlighted. So we go to the far end and as you get to the far end, you get two arrows, which is the indication that you can widen it. So when those two arrows pop up, you left click and hold and then you drag it a little bit and then release. And when you do, now you can see the number nice and clearly. The other number down here that we don't have is you go back to the schedule. Actually, no, we go to the payroll. And here at the bottom of the payroll, we have the total payroll of everyone. So we left click to highlight it, right click, copy, go to the cogs. And here where it says labor cost per week, we highlight it then right click and we paste that. And here you'll notice 5,313.01. Sometimes, in fact, here, what you can do is take the whole column and we just come up here to this. It has currency, we have dollars, we click on the dollars. And in doing that, now you have dollar signs for everything. And that is done on purpose. There's another one here for a dollar sign, but this one will not be a dollar sign because it is actually a percentage and we don't want to change that. So now, for you to complete this, you need to figure out what the food cost percentage is. And I'm going to leave that to you because I think you can figure that out. Um, then we come down here, the labor cost for the week, and then total cost per week. Well, the total cost per week is the COGS, which is the cost of the food, and the labor. So you add the cost of the food to the labor, which actually, in fact, uh, is this total cost of the week is going to be plus this, plus this. That is the labor and the food. We hit enter. And there's your dollar figure, $10,244.91. So it's actually quite easy to figure out what this is going to be, even though you haven't finished everything else yet, because this is going to be plus this minus this. And we hit enter. There you go. So there's your answer. The amount of profit you make in one week is going to be $8,980. And that is something which you have done throughout from every section there. Now, what is crazy and fantastic about this is all these tabs are now tied together. So if you look at the profit that you're making right here, if you come over here to the forecast and you decide that, well, on Monday, we are only going to do, we're not going to do any, we're going to do zero croissants on the Monday. And let's just see how that changes everything. So having zero croissants lowers the daily sales, lowers the weekly sales. And when we go to the cogs, it um, doesn't change the cogs here, but the sales down here is down. Your daily food cost percent goes up. Uh, your total sales goes down. Your labor stays the same, but now your profit goes down. So a simple thing like that can have quite a massive effect. So the rest of these cells that haven't been filled out, I'm going to leave those up to you. But very quickly, we're going to go now to the final one, which is yearly COGS, the calculation cost of goods sold. Now for this one, I need you to understand. I am not going to give you any information for this because I need you to work this out. This is your way of showing me that you understand everything that we've done over the last three weeks. See, the numbers may be $1 million, but it doesn't make any difference. The equations are going to be exactly the same as they are for the daily or the weekly. So if you know that these are your sales revenues, and you know this is your opening, in, by the way, OI means opening inventory, and CI means closing inventory. If you have all these numbers, if you have sales and you can find the COGS, then you can find the food cost percent very easy. And don't forget the equation. It's going to be opening inventory, add it to purchases, subtract the closing inventory. That gives you the COGS. So if you have COGS and you have the sales revenue, you take the COGS, you divide it by the sales revenue, and that will give you the food cost percentage. And the food cost percentage is going to be of the sales revenue.
So whatever this number could be here, this number could be something like 200,000. That is going, uh, uh, sorry, maybe 28%. And their COGS would probably be 200,000. But the labor cost is 16%. So if this is 28% and your labor cost is 16%, then this number needs to be 16% of this. So you figure out what that's going to be. And then this, of course, is going to be the same. And down here as well, if you have the opening inventory and you have the purchases and you have the closing inventory and you have a food cost percentage, by taking those numbers, you can find out what the COGS is going to be. And if you have COGS and a food cost percentage, you can do it in reverse and find out what your sales are going to be. So I'm not going to help you anymore with this. This is the last and final um, tab to be completed. And when you've done that, you're good to go. All right.